In this video, we're going to go over the process of glycolysis. But before I explain glycolysis, let me briefly uh, go over how the glucose ends up in our cell. So you consume carbohydrates, whatever form it could be, any kind of like uh, polysaccharides, disaccharides, starch, glycogen, lactose, whatever you consume, all this uh, polysaccharides have to be converted to monosaccharides by the time they get to a meat part of small intestine. So this process uh, from oral cavity to meat section of the <clears throat> small intestine, that process is called the process of digestion. So the process of digestion takes polysaccharides and converts everything to monosaccharides. When they're, once they're all converted to monosaccharides, the monosaccharides from the intestine will cross over into the circulation. So that's the second process. So the first process was the process of digestion. Now, crossing over from the intestine to the circulation, that's the process of absorption. So the glucose is absorbed or crosses from the intestine lumen into the circulation. Once it's in the circulation, circulation will transport this uh, uh, monosaccharides, basically glucose, into the liver and the liver will distribute it to the muscle cells and other cells for metabolism. Now at this point what happens when the glucose is absorbed, after the absorption, the blood glucose increases and that increased blood glucose will trigger production of insulin by the pancreas and insulin will go and tell the cells to take up those excess glucose from the blood so that the blood cell normalizes now we're going to look at what happens what's once the glucose enters the cell so here <clears throat> this is the capillary the blood the liver, so capillaries deliver this glucose, so this one represents over here the glucose. That glucose is going to basically transfer uh, or cross uh, by facility transportation from the capillaries into the interstitial fluid. And, and once it's transported to the interstitial fluid, from interstitial fluid it will cross the uh, cell membrane, plasma membrane, and enter the cell. So this square one that you see over here, this represents inside the cell, the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, once this glucose enters, as soon as the glucose enters the cell, uh, the body, uh, the cell takes and adds one phosphate molecule to carbon number six. So if you count carbon one, two, three, four, five, that's carbon number six. And this yellow uh, right over here is the phosphate. Phosphate is attached to carbon number six. Where do we get this phosphate from? So in this step, we said we use ATP. So this is an ATP molecule, which consists of three phosphates. If we take one of those phosphates from here and I bring it right over here and attach it to this carbon number six of the glucose. Now this is called glucose 6-phosphate, but this molecule is now left with two phosphates. So that's why this is right over here showing that this step requires or consumes ATP molecule and generates ADP molecule. So that one phosphate from ATP, which is energy rich molecule, is attached right over here to carbon number six. That's why the name of this molecule now becomes glucose 6-phosphate. Now, why does the cell do that? Why does the cell use its energy to attach phosphate? Number one, this glucose that was transported into the uh, uh, cell could easily go back out of the cell. We don't want that to happen. Addition of this phosphate basically traps the glucose molecule inside the cell and also it prepares it for further reaction. Uh, now that the glucose 6-phosphate is a, 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 a Glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate. Uh, glucose 6 phosphate uh, will be converted to glucose uh, fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. So, basically, in this step, step uh, again, what happens is uh, another ATP molecule is used and ADP molecule is generated. So, one phosphate from the ATP is 
basically attached to carbon number one that's why this is called fructose one six piece phosphate means like two phosphates one attached to carbon number six and one attached to carbon number one um, now the six carbon molecule will split into two three carbon molecules uh, a glycerol glyceraldehyde triphosphate molecule uh, and a dihydroxy acetone phosphate molecule now this di hydroxyacetone phosphate molecule this will convert also to glyceraldehyde triphosphate so basically in a nutshell the six carbon molecule splits into two three carbon molecules and one of those three carbon molecules will change and they both will become glyceraldehyde triphosphate so we're gonna have two glyceraldehyde triphosphate at the end of this step now each of those glyceraldehyde triphosphate we have now two of them each of them will go through another metabolic step and convert NAD to NADH now remember because there are two molecules so two NADH is converted to two NADH at this step what happens uh, one three bisphosphoglyceric acid converts to phosphoglyceric acid and um, one ATP is molecule molecule is generated so at this stage ATP, ADP is converted to ATP so remember right here you had consumed energy now in this process you're beginning to generate energy so because there are two molecules here we're going to generate two ATP one per each molecule and the process will continue and eventually uh, what is going to happen is that two pyruvic acid will be produced so basically you consume two ATP right over here and you generate that four ATP right over here two ATP in this step and two ATP in this step so let's summarize this process the breakdown of glucose to two pyruvate this is our process of glycolysis those are our input molecules or the molecules that's used or consumed or those are our output molecules the molecules that's generated obviously we have our main substrate over here the glucose and the product which is two pyruvate that's produced at the end of glycolysis so in this process what happens is we know that during the first two steps <clears throat> two molecules of ATP is consumed and two ADP is produced during first and second step of uh, uh, glycolysis that we call it phosphorylation we also know that two NADs consumed and two NADH are produced and those NADH will enter mitochondria for further reactions and 4 EDP is converted to 4 ATP so to summarize this glycolysis converts glucose to 2 pyruvate now pyruvate here has two options or two choices Either this pyruvate will enter mitochondria and convert to acetyl coenzyme A, which we call it aerobic respiration, or this pyruvate will convert to lactic acid through the anaerobic respiration. So the condition for this pathway, if there is no enough oxygen, then pyruvate will have to convert to lactic acid. If there is enough oxygen, then pyruvate will enter mitochondria and become uh, acetyl coenzyme A and we call that aerobic respiration now let's summarize the process of glycolysis process of glycolysis where does process of glycolysis occur it takes place in the cytoplasm how many pyruvates are produced at the end of glycolysis to pyruvic acid uh, how many total ATP is generated during the process of glycolysis we know that there's four ATP generated how many NED is used? Two NED is used during this process. Uh, what is the process of glycolysis? Process of glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose to two pyruvate. Uh, is that an anaerobic process or aerobic? It is an anaerobic process because throughout the process we saw that no oxygen has been used. Uh, does it generate any NADH? Yes. 
during the process of glycolysis to NADH are generated. What is the net, net gain of ATP during the process of glycolysis? We know that total of 2 ATP is used and total of 4 ATP is produced. So the net gain will be 2 ATP. How many ATP is used? 2 ATP used during this process. Does this process produce any carbon dioxide? No. Does this process produce any FEDH? No. No FEDH is produced during this process.